Blissfully mindful back at you with another chit chat. I'm gonna jump right in like I've been doing this week. I feel like we have really not actualized my voice, and I don't know, it feels like a lifetime of it. You all know how lately I've been saying, you know, thing everything is so loud, and I don't know, I just have this it's, it's almost like an overstimulation of sound and noises and just everything. I don't know, the sound of everything has just been so polarized in trying to figure out why, you know, where that's coming from. And I have figured it out, and it, it came about in the craziest way. It was an interaction, it was a, just got so intense, like someone offered their assistance basically, and you know, that's great and all. They offered their assistance. I mean, I honestly didn't really need it. And I may have kind of been feeling some kind of way about it in the first place because I really didn't need the assistance. It was like, you know, I don't know. Hey, I am, I have a car full of groceries and I'm carrying the groceries into the house. And I'm right at the door with the groceries. And I'm at, no, I'll even go a step further because even this was even more exaggerated than that. Let's say I okay, I have a car full of groceries. I'm bringing the groceries in the house, and I'm in the house with the groceries. And a person comes along and says, "Oh, let me give you a hand with that." And all you really are doing is maybe moving the groceries from one place on the floor to another place on the floor, except. It's all in disarray. There's no structure or anything to the way that you're going about providing the assistance to help me do, you know, move the groceries from maybe the door, I don't know, to right near the counter. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really unnecessary because I've done all the hard work. You know, I came from the car into the building, up the elevator, down the hall, you know, all of that into the apartment with the groceries. And then once I get there, I really have already done everything. So I don't really need any more assistance. So it was that kind of situation where, you know, the, the assistance was offered where it really wasn't needed anyway. And I can go into some other reasons why I feel like you know that probably having probably some ego stuff with that person but that's here nor there because that really doesn't have that much to do with my story so anyway the person just consistently provided the assistance in like the most annoying way like you know kept putting things in such disarray that it ended up creating so much chaos and worst of all so much extra work for me and it drove me insane like I mean I just started all this anger started to well up you know and that's also my OCD I will you know, admittedly um, say that you know definitely I'm sure a lot of it had to do with my OCD assistance was very unnerving it was just really you know testing a lot of stuff in me and it was like driving me crazy because I, like I said I had to oh go and undo everything that this person did and I was not in the mood to be working extra like i was already tired from what i was already doing and so you know now you have tired frustrated <laughs> you know angry ocd just so many factors in here now and i asked the person so i just stopped you know i stopped because i was so tired of fixing everything so i stopped i said look 
the way you're doing this is not working. It's creating more work for me because you're putting this in a way that can logically just make things more chaotic than they already are. And we're trying to make things more efficient, do things more efficiently, you know, work less. <laughs> I mean, I'm just not into work doing all this hard manual stuff. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know, it was that kind of conversation. Oh, no, no. So the person's like, oh, no, you know, it'll work. It'll still work. Don't worry about it. It'll still work. But there's no way that it could have worked, you know, the way they were doing it. And I'll give you another example of what I mean by that. So say there's a roadway and the construction workers literally go and build an entire um, bar or something that goes across the roadway and then tells the cars that, oh, you can still go through don't worry about it it'll still work out you can still go through go through that road like no you can't still go through the road if, if if you build a block a blockade like you can't still go and it was it was literally just like that okay so i just had to set set it up for you all right so you know the person continues okay to <laughs> to obstruct <laughs> uh, progress here you know just because at this point now i noticed like a shift in the person and, and now it seems like now they're intentionally making things difficult so now i'm getting angry okay now because <laughs> now you know i have progressed here i'm like okay now you know and at first it was like annoyance and stuff like that but no now it's like full-on anger because like are you serious you know like why are you making me work so hard like i was so annoyed when i didn't even ask for your help so so annoyed um okay so the person go you know they offer their assistance i'm upset now you know they get they're getting me like almost enraged i'm like getting so upset you know, i'm no kind of blissfully <laughs> mindful here and not at all okay and so i ultimately blow up i mean i go in go off on this person and the thing is i already had my issues with this person like i feel like you know they they never quite give their all they're just like mediocre you know we had we had a discussion on you know mediocrity this person defines that like they just do the bare minimum or not anything at all and that's okay that's not okay i strive for excellence at all times i just don't do things like mediocre or halfway you know, if I'm going to do it, I'm all in. That's just me. You know, you ask me to do something or ask for my help. I'm all in, you know, and I'm doing it to the best of my abilities. No excuses. So that's kind of how it all, you know, blew up because I guess it's because that's kind of my disposition on things like that. I just don't do that. So it's really kind of hard for me sometimes like to kind of understand someone that doesn't have that approach. Okay, so and that's growth I have. That's all that's all my stuff. Okay, that that's some growth I got to work on and and whatnot. And that's okay. So anyway, right before, you know, I explode, I honestly I had this moment of almost like clarity and just extreme calm. I know that sounds so crazy like to have calm before you <laughs> you know like erupt like a volcano, but I literally did. I had this moment of just calm. It was just a moment. It was ever so slight that honestly you could almost not notice it. But I remember it and I noticed it. And it was just calm. Just for one moment. And then I just let loose. And I realized that that was not even about that person. Um... The situation was necessary because I needed that volcanic explosion. Like I needed to express my truth. I needed to be expressive and I needed to not be this, um, I don't know, illusion of, of who I am. It's like I needed to just be myself. I'm not going to be blissfully mindful all of the time. I'm just not like... I'm not going to be okay with something I'm not okay with, you know, all the time. Sure, you know, I can sort of 
deal with it at times and stuff like that and that's okay it's just that it's just not gonna happen all the time just like a volcano there are sometimes it needs to erupt you know there are times you need to release you can't keep living this lie and i realized that you know just in life how often are we living a lie how often are we not living our truth how not are, how often are we not speaking our truth giving life to our own voice to our true voice and how often do we even sit back and analyze whether the voice we're hearing is even our own and that's what happened for me in that moment is that i realized all those thoughts that were going through my mind those weren't even my voice most of them were my ego to be honest most of them were and it wasn't until the silence that i actually heard my voice and i have been longing to hear silence i have been longing for that you all know i've been definitely expressive about how much i've been so sensitive to sound and how loud the world has been for me lately like every sound like you know i'll hear a hum whether it's the air conditioning the hum of the air conditioner it sounds so loud <laughs> the cars whizzing by outside they seem so loud and i'm like what is all this loudness the dog paws tip tap 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 tapping on the floor just everything so loud and just someone walking down the hallway because i live in you know in an apartment and it's like everything is just so wow and i wonder what was that about and it's just i think that i just needed to hear my own voice that event happened because i needed a reason to release it and so i did i that's exactly what i did i feel like i realized that so much of my life has been spent um hearing someone else's voice not my own hearing this voice that's been created for me and i and it, honestly it's my whole life it's all of our whole life when we first come here we don't there's we don't have words no language none of that all we have is our own expression you know however we go about expressing our who we are and our truth and our voice you know it's just not through language and words and we're taught that by our parents and then you go and your parents start to you know once you learn all these words you're so proud of yourself got this huge vocabulary and then your parents are like you know when you do when you do talk like oh no, you're okay now you're talking too much or don't say that word <laughs> and it's like you just taught me these words and now you don't want me to say half of them like if you for instance if your parent tells you to do something you say no don't tell me no i mean if you ask me to do it and i feel like i don't want to do it so i said no i didn't want to do it so like you know but you're taught so young to start to live this lie and to not be your authentic self and to not give life to your voice you become this puppet of a voice you know it's not yours because it's based on this combination of your parents, your teachers, when you're an adult, your boss, you know, your coworkers, your just who authoritative figures, anyone telling you what to say, how to say it, when to say what they want you to say, but not necessarily what you want to say. You're just saying all this stuff to placate all of these people and that is not your voice. That's all <laughs> of this the combination of all of everyone else's voice you know this society the culture you you can't speak in this tone you can't say what you want to say here because it's considered rude and you should feel shameful for making someone feel however you make them feel by what you say or you know if even if you're having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation you want to say some things but you don't say them because you're like oh if i say that you know this person is going to take it this way and i don't really want to go down that road and it just turns into this whole thing of i don't know it's so much constriction and you just can't do this and you can't do that and it's like an imprisoning of your voice until the point that you don't even know what that sounds like you don't even know what your voice is because it's like what stops you from just expressing exactly what you want to express you know it's usually some kind of guilt some kind of morality trip um some sort of uh self-imposed shame because 
other something external to you can't make you feel shame shame is something internally you know sparked you feel that you can feel the shame someone else can't feel sh your shame you know so a lot of it you're kind of putting on yourself and so i'm not you know saying all of this is to blame it on society and blame everything on everyone else i'm saying it to say that this was a realization that i actually have a voice and i actually can will myself to express it whenever i want to do it and not have to feel any kind of way about it you know just let it out when i let that dragon loose on on that person you are <laughs> it felt so liberating there was no regret there was no shame i wouldn't do it any other way if it if the whole thing happened again i would do it exactly that way because i needed that to happen i needed to do that it felt good and it, it was like why have i not been using my voice all this time if why am i saying i like something if i don't like something you know like, why am I doing that? Who am I doing that for? I mean, I can only live my life for me. So I don't know why I'm doing all this. And it was like, it sparked questions like that. You know, like, what do I actually like? Because I don't even damn know at this point because I keep doing stuff based on all of these other external factors that kind of are dictating that I have to do it this way because of X, Y, and Z instead of you know, if I'm just sitting quietly and silent with myself and hearing my voice, because my voice is actually in the silence. I can't hear my voice when all that noise is going on until I silence all of that, all of that background noise until I silence it, I will never hear my voice. And trust me, even that one that's chit chatting away in there is not my voice, that's the ego. That's not my voice. So until I even shut that one down and quiet that one and still everything. And I mean in the thick of it. You have to be able to do that. And that's what I realized that I have to be able to do that because I live in a world of noise. Constant, incessant noise. It never stops. It's just ongoing. And this is the world that I live in. So I have to figure out in the moments you know how to find those pockets of silence so that i can recenter so i can get balance and so that i can observe my truth and that i can hear my voice to know what it is that i actually want and what i desire and how i can bring that into fruition and how i can actualize all of the goodness that i want in my life how can I do that? How can I take advantage of all the opportunities that have presented themselves, that will present themselves? How can I see all of those things if I'm just inundated with all of this noise? I have to quiet all of that noise so I can hear myself. And so to say all that, you know, that, <laughs> I know that was like such a roundabout way to say that to rewrite your narrative, you have first identify your own voice you cannot do it otherwise there's no way you're not going to hear it and you're not going to be able to rewrite that script right now you all know that's what i'm doing i'm rewriting my script i'm doing this thing again you all i'm doing it all over from scratch and i'm making this thing hot this time i am paying attention to the details i'm putting in work i'm being very specific very precise i am willing these things into fruition and it feels good i'm in a good space with it and so as to that issue i love that it happened i appreciate it i'm i don't know i, I can't words <laughs> cannot express how valuable that experience was i needed it i really needed it and i have to do it more often not necessarily be explosive but i definitely have to bring life to my truth and my voice is that it is there it is mine no one can take it from me not even the ego can it cannot take the ego needs to get in this place okay and i my voice puts it there <laughs> it puts it there once i have once i have a realization that my voice is there it's all powerful it's all knowing it's my truth it's who i am I hope you all are able to relate to this because this is just where we're happy this week. And, you know, I'm sure you all can relate to situations like that where, you know, somebody just like, oh, 
And, you know, and, and hopefully you get that moment, you know, because that moment was so precious and so valuable that I just now I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with more of those moments. And now I'm finding them everywhere. I'm like, it's funny how not seeing that truth created this alternate reality, so to speak, not my actual reality. You know, I don't know what one I was living in, but this is a different one. Now I'm seeing so many opportunities for my voice. I'm seeing so many opportunities for my voice to will into existence, all the things that I desire. And it's my voice that can do that. And I mean, there's so much power in that. Comment below. Love you all so much. And if you have not already done so, definitely subscribe to this channel. Turn on your post notifications so that you know when I post. Follow me over on Instagram at blissfully.mindful. Always putting stuff up there. You all see me? You all been seeing me in the count and the community board? Yeah, I've been posting stuff there too. Go to blissfullymindful.life. You all, we're bringing life to this vision, life to this voice, and that is where I'm doing it over there on blissfullymindful.life. Sign up for the newsletter. Trust, trust, trust. It is called Inspirations, and it will be an inspiration to you every Sunday morning. I'm putting my heart, my soul, my mind, my voice into it, and it is definitely something that will put you in the right mindset, um, put you on the right energetic frequency for the week to proceed, you know, for the week, to go into the week with a different perspective one that feels good one that is healthy as usual i love you love you bunches and bunches and bunches sunflower smooches and i will see you all next time peace and love Mwah.